Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Shop Dog Fabrication. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing some maintenance on my daughter's 2005 RAV4. Um, we've had it for a couple years now. Um, absolutely doing a great job. It's a all wheel drive RAV4 being in Michigan. Um, she's actually gonna be going to Tennessee, to the University of Tennessee um, to study. Uh, for college and so we'll be moving her into her apartment uh, next weekend So we're gonna do uh, some maintenance on it make sure everything's good So when she goes down there, she's going to be pretty trouble free uh, So we're gonna do an oil change. We're gonna change the air filter. We're gonna clean the cabin filter and we're gonna check the brakes um, Now I have brake pads if I need them and I'll kind of show you uh, a rule of thumb to replace them or, or if I do need to replace them I'll show you how I'm gonna do it and then uh, what to look out for if your rotors are maybe a little too grooved, you either need to replace them um, or have them resurfaced, or if you know they're good to go and you can just go ahead and swap out brake pads. So with that said, let's jump into it and we'll start with a couple of the basic things. Uh, we'll just do the cabin filter real quick, the air filter real quick, and uh, we'll fill, top off the uh, washer fluid real fast and then we'll go ahead and do the oil change and then we'll do the brake inspection or slash replacement last. So we're in the in, in the vehicle and I've cleaned out the glove box because if you don't, when this thing opens up, it's gonna dump everything out on the floor. Basically all you need to do is push in the sides like so. And you can see the glove box will pop right down. And then from there, then from there, we need to get into the cabin air filter which is this guy right here. Just pop those tabs loose, pull it out, and you can see this one is pretty darn dirty. There's a lot of crap in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take my air compressor um, or shop back and clean this out real good. All right, you can see that the air filter is a whole lot better than what it was. Actually, it's in pretty darn good shape. So we're gonna go ahead now that I've shop backed it and reassemble this. So again, it is simply Taking it, push it back in like so. Just clip your, to squeeze in on the sides again, and you're all set. Now I gotta pull all my daughter's junk back in her vehicle. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place the air filter. So to replace the air filter, there's two snaps over here, top and a bottom one. Pop that off, and then here's your air filter. So this one isn't horrible, but being that uh, she's going to be off to school, I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a new one. So let me go ahead and grab the new one, and then we'll just reverse the order of putting this back together. So you can see the new one compared to the old one, um, you know, being the top one being the new one. Uh, is a whole lot cleaner than the bottom one. So it will, you know, make sure that the engine runs best and, you know, gets the best fuel economy that you can get. So with that said, let me pop this back in here, like so, see if we can do this one-handed. Set that in place. Now you can see here, these are kind of tabs, you know, so these basically take this, I'll see if I can do it one-handed. Slip in like so, you just slip it in like so. Then come back over here and attach your clips again. Top clip and then the same with your bottom clip. And that's how easy it is to service your air filter. So now what we'll do is we will double check our washer fluid. So here's our washer fluid and see if she's been using it a lot. So basically what you're looking for is, and she's been using it quite a bit, so she's almost out. Yep, there you can finally see the wet mark in here. Um, so right there, and you can see all that that's dry, so it's pretty much empty. So I'm going to go ahead and get some washer fluid and I'll top this off. All right, so now we're under the vehicle. And on the passenger side of the vehicle, um, here's your exhaust tube. Right here is your drain plug. This is a 14 millimeter 
um, socket or a wrench that you need to use to loosen the drain plug. Make sure you have a drain pan handy to catch the oil. Normally what I'll do is I'll just loosen it first just a little bit, um, pull the drain pan underneath and then you know finish loosening it so the oil all catches into the drain pan. I would highly recommend you do this one cold because if you just drove the vehicle, the oil will be very hot. Um, you know, and I don't want you to burn your hand. So make sure your vehicle is uh, cold or, you know, just uh, uh, maybe lukewarm. But um, like I said, loosen this first, then slide your drain pan under and then finish loosening this by hand underneath, drain all the oil out. And then we'll put the drain plug back in before we change out the oil filter. And there you can see, you know, the oil draining out into the drip or into the uh, drain pan. So here's your oil filter. It is on the passenger side on the front of the engine. Um, so it's very easy to access. Uh, so basically what I do is I, what I use is a setup like this to get to it. Um, basically the oil filter will fit right in there and I can loosen it up real easy and get it out. So with that said, I'll try to do this one handed. So I was I had to get two hands on it, but basically now I've got it loose. I'll go ahead and take this off and get the drain pan underneath it and just spin it off the rest of the way and set it in the oil pan. Here um, is where this would go. You can see the kind of the metal surface here. You wanna make sure that the gasket, you know, came off with the oil filter and didn't stick to this. Um, Cause otherwise if you put the new one on, you could double gasket this and create a leak condition. So anyway, looks like the gasket has is stayed with on with the oil filter. So I'm just gonna wipe this off now, uh, clean up my little mess, and then we'll put the new oil filter on. So one thing I like to do uh, before I put the new oil filter on is take a little oil and put it on the seal here. Um, that way, you know, it's just a personal preference thing. I've been doing it forever that way. Uh, I think it makes the filter come off a little easier. So that's just a personal thing. So just dip my finger in the oil and just put some oil on the, on the O-ring here. And then I'll go ahead and put the oil filter back on. The one thing to note when you put it back on, obviously you don't cross thread it, take your time, spin it in by hand. Um, and then you don't need to crank that thing on there real tight. Um, you know, you just need to snug it up and you'll be fine. And then we'll go ahead and add the oil next. All right, guys, so now on the left, on the passenger side front of the engine, here's the oil filler cap. You can see it recommends using a 5W30 oil. So the oil that we are going to use on my daughter's vehicle is a platinum high mileage synthetic uh, oil, a 5W30. It's got about 130,000 miles or so on it. Um, still runs great. So we've been using uh, synthetic motor oil for many years and always had good success. So we're gonna go ahead and pour four quarts of oil in this. Now this is a five quart container and here you can see the speck of the spine, um, you know, basically how many quarts there are. So here's the one, the two, the three, the four, and basically it stops at four and a half. And, you know, you can see the level up here is five. So we're going to basically dump in all the oil till there's one quart left. And then we'll start the vehicle up to make sure there's no engine oil leaks underneath the vehicle that I didn't, uh, you know, see the either the plug or the oil filter all the way. So it's just a, something I always do, just to make sure it's a quick safety check, just to make sure you don't have any oil leaks. So that All right, guys, now we've got the oil filled up with the four quarts. Let's talk about your waste oil for just a moment. Um, don't dump this down the drain. Don't dump this in your backyard. You know, don't dump it anywhere. Um, you can fill up a, uh, uh, a water jug, a, you know, a little milk jug, uh, an old any type of plastic container, a couple of two liter bottles, whatever, um, and take it to your local auto parts store, like uh, Advanced Auto, AutoZone, those types of places. We'll take the used oil. And there's a good sign, no oiling. So 
We're good to go. So the so the first step in doing this is to um, break your lug nuts, lug nuts loose while it's on the ground. Uh, it'll be easier to do it than before you lift it in the air. So what I'm going to do now is loosen all the lug nuts real quick and then we'll jack it up um, and we'll take the tire off and we'll inspect the brakes. All right, so where I'm going to jack my daughter's vehicle up is basically right here behind the front tire. There's a nice suspension piece here. So I'm going to jack it up so that we can get the tire off the ground. Tire off the ground. The other thing we're going to do is always put a jack stand underneath the vehicle for safety. Um, can't stress that enough uh, that you have a jack stand under here in case it falls down. So, uh, so even though it's not resting on it, um, once I take the tire off, I'll lower it down and rest this on the uh, jack or on the jack stand uh, for safety. All right, so this is your brake mounting bracket. This is your caliper. Right here is one of your brake pads. You have one on the inside, or I should say one on the inside over here and one on the outside here. So what I'm gonna do is this is a 14 millimeter bolt. You have two of them, one top and one down here on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two, take the caliper off so I can show you this a little better and show you the brake pads, um, you know, and give you an idea when they should be replaced. Hers actually look pretty good. Uh, I think we can go for a little while longer before I need to replace them. You can see the rotor surface is nice and smooth. I will show you a bad rotor here in just a moment. Um, so let me go ahead and take this apart and I'll give you a guideline on brake pads. All right, so the one thing we wanna make sure of is that our caliper pins slide nice and free. Um, you know, so basically this bottom one actually has like a, uh, you can see that big rubber piece on the bottom. Um, so it's a little stiffer in there, but we still want to lube these guys up since we have it apart to make sure they don't seize up. Um, so what I recommend you guys use is this product, Permatex Ultra Disc Brake Caliper Lube. Uh, this stuff works great. It's super gooey. Um, you know, it does a really nice job of preventing your caliper pins from seizing up, um, especially for those of you that are in the northern corrosion states. So what can happen if you don't take care of your brakes, if they wear out, you know, you let them go forever and don't maintain them, or if a caliper pin sticks on you? Well, basically this. Um, this rotor got all chewed up. It is pretty well destroyed. Uh, probably cannot be resurfaced. And if you noticed the brake pad here as well, you know, there's a little bit of brake pad here, but you can see it's the shiny area. It basically was metal to metal. This happened on my son's car. Um, what happened is he had a caliper pin stick on him. Um, you know, the, all the brake pads were great on all the other corners, but just this one caliper pin stuck and caused the brake pad to wear metal to metal and he was hearing, you know, squeaky noises. So, FYI, just a little tip. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grease these up, put a little grease on these and stick them back in. And then we'll go ahead and I'll show you what you need to do to put the brake pads on. Because what we need to do, what we need to do is this caliper, this uh, piston, we need to slide it inboard um, so that the caliper pins, or I'm sorry, so the brake pads will fit. Um, I recommend you only taking one side out of, a part at a time. The reason being, if you push this piston in and the other side you have a part, it could push the other piston out because you're pushing the fluid, you know, that's back here up back in the reservoir or pushing on the other piston. And you could, again, like I said, push that piston out. So I recommend you only taking one side apart at a time to do the brake service. So now what we need to do is push this piston back a little bit, like I had mentioned. So what I do is I take the old brake pad, set it in here. I have a C-clamp. We set the C-clamp in here like so. And then we slowly compress the piston back. Um, just take your time, ease it back. 
and the piston will, if it's not seized, just go right back into the bore with no problem. And that's why I say don't have both sides apart at the same time, because as you're pushing this piston back, you're pushing the fluid back, and it could push the piston out on the other side, and then you've you know, created a mess for yourself, because then you either gotta try and get it all back together, or you have to buy a new caliper. Plus, then you also have to bleed the brakes and everything. So now you can see I bottomed it out. Caliper's all, you know, the piston's all back in. And now what I'll do is I'll set the brake pads in place, and then we'll slip the caliper back over. All right, so now I've got the new brake pads in place, and you can see they basically just slip into these little clips here. Um, you know, really easy to do. Now you can take your caliper, slide it back on. You may need to adjust your caliper pins just a little bit. Let's push them in a little bit more. There we go. And then you can take your fasteners here, tighten them back up, and you're all done. So all I need to do, like I said, is now put these two fasteners in, and this breaks, this side of the um, front brake is completed. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these two up real quick. I'm going to go the other side, do the exact same thing. I'm not going to film it, and then we'll go to the back. Uh, it has disc brake in the back as well. Um, some of you may have drums, but for those that have disc, we'll go ahead and, and I'm going to do the other side and then we'll go to the back, like I said, and uh, we'll check out to see what kind of condition in the rears are in. So well, guys, I wanted to show you these brake pads. These are the ones that came out the front. The, these here are the left side or the driver's side. These here are the right side or the passenger side. If you notice, the passenger side ones are actually thinner than the driver's side ones. The reason being is when I went to go and look at the passenger side, the lower caliper pin was actually sticking. Uh, whoever did the pre brakes previously before we purchased the vehicle um, did not seat the, um, uh, the rubber boot uh, properly and it allowed water and debris and stuff to get up inside of the caliper pin and it was almost uh, fully stuck. So I was able to work it loose and lube it up and grease it up and then reseat that boot. Um, so hopefully we'll keep all the debris out and then we'll have even wear left or right. All right, guys, now let's talk about the rear brakes just a little bit. They're a little different animal than the fronts. They are disc brake. Um, the difference in this rotor compared to the front one is you notice this is a solid rotor and it doesn't have the venting in the middle. Um, so that's one difference. The other difference is these pads are a little harder to remove than uh, the fronts are. And I'll show you why here in a second. Um, there are two bolts you basically need to remove. There is one right here. And then this one down here, you can see, you know, these little rubber boots here um, is where you want to loosen those up. So I've already removed the uh, bolts or loosened them. And if you notice, here's your little baby cat, your little baby brake pads. Um, and you notice that little wear bar indicator too. Uh, so you'll see this has uh, got a smaller piston than the front. Um, but that little wear bar, you know, was nowhere near um, clicking. So these brake pads in the back are fine. Um, the reason the rear brakes last longer than the front brakes is the front brakes, uh, if I remember right, is like a 60-40 split or 65-35 split. By that I mean the front brakes take more of the load than the rear brakes. So your rear brakes will typically last a lot longer than your front brakes. So these rear brakes are in very good condition. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this caliper back up. Um, now that I've looked at them, you know, and the brakes are in, in, like I said, really good shape. But if you had to replace these animals, uh, they're quite a bit different than the front. So there's two pins that you need to knock out from the backside. There's one right here. And there's another pin I'm trying to see it right here. Basically, on the back side, um, you know, you'll need to, let's see, where would it be? Right here, or right here. Um, 
you know, basically you need to knock the pin out and push it through. And the reason being you need to do that is if you notice this brand new one, see how it has holes here and on the other side, basically those pins go through those two holes and they also go through, you know, this stainless steel cover. So you need to knock those pins out to put in the stainless steel cover and the two rear brake pads, the inner and the outer, um, you know, so to assemble this. So the rears are just a little bit more cumbersome. You'd have to get a, a punch and a hammer and knock them out, you know, replace the pads and put the punch and the hammer and knock them back in. And then of course, grease your caliper pins again, and then bolt it all up. Same rule applies to the rear. You can see, you know, if, you're, if you go metal to metal, chances are you're just gonna have to replace the rear rotors. Um, you can see, you know, basically this one's loose, so it'll be pretty easy to take off uh, if you have to. Uh, and usually you can see here, there's a threaded spot where you can take a metric nut, run it in, tighten it, you know, and it'll help push it away from, you know, the, uh, from the, um, you know, from the uh, bracket or the spindle, I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the rear brakes, how it's set up. Like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble these since they're in great shape. Um, so I'm finished with my inspection. So let me put this back together and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, everybody. I hope uh, this video uh, helps you out. Um, you know, learn some of the basics about doing some simple maintenance. Like I said, maybe this is a vehicle you picked up as a second vehicle, uh, something for your teenage uh, son or daughter, um, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, you can see the maintenance was pretty easy to do. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with any of it, obviously uh, reach out to a local service uh, technician and have him perform the repairs, or at least now you have a better idea of what the repairs entail um, if you need to have something done and they provide you with some sort of a quote. So uh, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you guys subscribe, you know, for future content. Um, ring, hit the little bell, as they say, you know, so stuff pops up. But uh, I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. And I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. Take care.